everyone. I'm Larry Ridley, and this is the NFL on EA Sports. We've got a good one on tap today, and there's going to be two quarterbacks ready to get it done on the gridiron. It's the Giants going up against the Falcons. So with kickoff straight ahead, we'll check in with our broadcast team. Here are Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. Well, there's a new building set to open adjacent to us to the south, but for now, they're still playing football at the Georgia Dome, and that's where we're located here in downtown Atlanta. Today, after a crazy opening weekend, it's on to week two, and we've got a good one here between the New York Giants and the Atlanta Falcons. And a good return. He's across the 35-yard line right around the 36. stopped here on this first play as he gets it to the line of scrimmage and no more and a lot of the weight of this offense falls on the shoulders of the running back that's because the offense knows if they give him any openings any opportunities he can turn it into a big play at any time as they run left side and nowhere for him to go again he'll get back to the line of scrimmage that's it they'll lose a yard and it brings up third now whistles come in we're going to get a timeout here by the offense they'll have two remaining as we step aside here in this first quarter So now an early third and ten here on their opening drive. Hurry up, here we go. Back Hurry up. Up, Philly, here we go. Hot. Back to throw here. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. And he's got the first down yardage as he brings this up to the 47. So opening drive, third down, they go with a slant, it works. And I'm wondering when the league's going to figure it out because everyone throws it on third down. You expect pressure, so you want the ball in the hands of the quarterback quickly. It's a three-step route ordinarily, and you're throwing it where you see the receiver breaking towards you. So it's an inside route. Everyone likes it, and it's executed very well. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he'll fight his way forward to about the 48-yard line. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. And here are the defensive starters. In your old position, you get to talk about the secondary. The best athletes on the field, Brandon. Ah, debatable. Well, we'll see how this goes today. I love, I love the way you put my guys down. But you know this. They've got to cover, and they have to tackle. They have a heck of a task in front of them in this game. Now a shotgun snap as they'll look to throw. Looking for his running back, and he's got him. And he's brought down. It's a pickup of 15 and a fresh set of downs. We can talk all we want about football being a game of strength and brawn. It's also a game of mismatches, and they're trying to create one there. Getting it to their back out of the backfield to make a bigger play. As we often say, get it to him in space, let him use his leg. Yeah, if he can get a matchup against a linebacker or maybe a defensive end dropping out in a zone blitz, he's going to win that battle just about every time. So the offense has it first and 10. And they'll try the ground game here with the running back. 
And he's going to get this inside the 30. Ten yards on the pick up there. And it'll give the Falcons a first down. Absolutely love the run right there. This guy's known for his quickness, but also for his speed. And he's able to get to the second level almost before you blink if you give him any type of blocking. Always talk about slot receivers. And they're usually known as quicker than fast. In this case, we've got a guy who's quick and fast, and he used it to great advantage. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And he's going to take this one down to about the 23-yard line. Give him three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. Partner, we know today's NFL is really built around the guy throwing the football. But these short runs, they still pay dividends because they can take their toll on a defense and they can add up as the game goes along. You control the clock, you control the ball, and that way you often control the game. And after the play on the ground, that brings up second down here. Looking to throw. And it's a short one here, complete to his tight end. That catch good for only a yard, and it'll be third down. Well, the strategy was evident there. Get it to your tight end and make it a one-on-one -on -one play with a cornerback. Who's usually going to win that one? The tight end, but not there. Not in this situation. How about the corner defeating that logic and making a really nice tackle? Third down, he'll drop to throw. And this is going to be incomplete. Now Cody Parkey out to try the field goal. It's a 39-yard attempt right hash. And Parkey's kick is good. And the Falcons are out to a 3-0 advantage. So the opening drive for him here on their home turf results in a field goal. Now that's the way you want to get things started. Your stadium, your crowd, you've got the ball, put points on the board first, and let everyone start to celebrate. And he'll get across the 20 before he's brought down at about the 23-yard line. of an opening to get this one back up to his 20. A solid run on first down. Gain of seven. Leaves him with a second and three. First play of the drive. Let's give credit all around. Excellent blocking, but a guy carrying the ball. He was the finisher. A really nice run. Alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon, and it's the Giants with the football here as we begin quarter number two. They're looking at a second and short yardage to start things out. And he's able to get up here to the 26. It's a pickup of six and good enough to move the chains. So many teams want to throw the ball in this situation nowadays, but I love watching a team that has enough confidence to go ahead and run the football in that situation. That's almost a tendency breaker. So it'll be first down here after the run. bring him down after just a short pickup. Three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. Some of the most unselfish players on any football team 
defensive tackles because we ask them to just eat up blocks and allow other people to make tackles. But when he can make a play himself, as we just saw there, that's a big day. He'll drop to throw. And he's got his man on the out route. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. I know many people like to throw to the tight end, maybe in a little flexed out position because he creates mismatches with his size. The slot receivers do the same thing with their quickness, their speed, and their route running savvy. They'll give it to him right up the gut. And he's got some space here. A big play there for the Giants. 54 yards on the ground. And runs like that with explosiveness. That's what this rookie can bring to the table. And add to it speed, patience, vision. A rookie has all of that. That's usually a veteran's combo play. I love this guy. signal yet. I don't think he got in. He didn't. They'll mark him at the one. I know he might be a little winded after that previous long run, but now you're in goal-to-goal -goal situation. That changes what you do defensively, and it worked for them on that play. Maybe trying to reward him after that long run. We'll see if they go back to him again on the ground. Try and pound it in with Drake. And he is not going to get in as the big bodies stop him at the one. Calling a gain of a yard as they get a little bit closer here. It's third and goal. Uh, he got halfway home there down to the one, but a good job of keeping him out of the end zone. Exactly. Halfway home isn't all the way home, right? So they feel pretty good about keeping him out on that play. They've gotten it to the one. Can they get that final yard here on third and goal? Two minutes to go here in the first half. We're back to Atlanta right after this timeout. They held him out on second down, and now here's third and goal. Time running out here on the play clock. Now a handoff here to his running back. No gain on the play, and what to do now on fourth and goal. Partner, it's decision time now. I know it's still just the second quarter, but you have an opportunity to either kick the field goal or go for it and try and score a big-time touchdown. This is why the head coaches get paid the big bucks. And his kick is good. And that will tie us at 3-3. So they take it all the way to the one-yard line, but in the end, they opt for three. I know if this was a video game, they never would have gone for the field goal because, Brandon, who kicks field goals in video games? But you've got to make sure you get points. And that was as easy a three as you can get. You kick field goals in video games. That's who kicks field goals in video games. Atlanta now coming out on the field. And last time able to get three. It's not what they wanted. They wanted six, but they got at least something. They mustered something out of the drive. They'll take it. Just I, I like the way you, you've described it. Not ideal, but they'll take it. Anything to put some points on the board. But this time on offense, they don't even want to see the field goal kicker trot on the field. They want that ball in the end zone. Yeah, they'll be going for six. And they'll go with the ground attack here. And not a whole lot doing there. So he'll get it up to about the 28-yard line. A gain of three, second down. I do know from experience that when you slow down someone's running game, you're now doing the dictating on defense. And guess what? Now you're getting ready to tee off on their quarterback because they have to throw it all the time. But you still have to be alert for the draws and other plays of that nature to make sure you don't get hurt. They'll drop. He rifles one that's intercepted. There he goes left side. And he will bring it back 
It's a pick six and a Giants touchdown. Short throw pick six right there, those linebackers. They love when those short throws come and those eyes get real wide, don't they? How about the anticipation on the play? Reading, reacting, and then the ability to catch the football and take it in the opposite direction. And he knocks it through. So they'll get another shot on offense following that pick six. And now the kick is away. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And he's able to get it across the 20, but not by much, as he's marked down at the 21-yard line. Atlanta now coming out on the field. to him right up the gun. And they're going to get this one all the way out across the 45. A really nice gain of 25 yards. Sometimes those lines that are drawn on a grease board or in a playbook, they come to life and, <laughs> out on the field, don't they? And we just saw that on that outside handoff to the right. That right tackle, he gets excited for that call, doesn't he? He does, because he just wants to dominate his guy and say, listen, I was the point of attack. I took care of business. That's why you're able to get downfield and add all those yards to your total. Yeah, really nice game there. Second and ten, he'll look to throw again. And incomplete there. A nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. And that drop will cause a little bit of angst for the play caller because you know they've worked all week game planning and flexing the tight end out and making him a matchup issue for the defense. They had what they wanted, and he drops the ball. Yeah, just couldn't hang on to the slam. They'll look to throw. They'll try and set up the screen. It's complete. And he will have first down yardage as he's brought down at the 41. A good gain of 14 there, and it moves to James. Let's give a little credit there. The offensive play caller sense that the screen pass was available. Whenever you're getting a lot of heavy pressure towards your quarterback, that's when you're thinking about running the screen and using that pressure against the defense. And it worked very well there for a first down. Now on first down, he'll drop to throw it. A fight for the football, and it's intercepted. A great read, and it's picked off. And his guys have got it back at the closing stages of the first half. And New York set to take the field. And you got to think, if this is anything other than just taking a knee, I'd be very surprised. Yeah, they've got enough to talk about at the half. Why do anything else? Let's get out of there. And now here's a carry heading left. And he'll take this up only to about his 18-yard line. So we have reached halftime with a touchdown. That's the difference on the scoreboard. As we send you down to our EA Sports Studios in Orlando, where we find our man Larry Ridley with our halftime report. So both teams have their marching orders, and we'll get going again here in quarter number three. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And he'll take this one near the 25, call it the 26-yard line. And New York set to take the field. They have the lead, now they'll be looking to extend that lead. And this is where I enjoy talking about one of my favorite subjects, tendency breakers, or counters as I also like to call them. You've done things in a certain way in the first half, and they've had ability to see what you've done. They're going to make their adjustments. So guess what? You adjust yourself and try and stay ahead of the pace because you are looking for some separation in this ball game. The adjustment to the adjustment. Without a doubt. <laughs> show him one thing, hit him with something else. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. That's a really nice play to be able to stack that one up. When they get back in the huddle, he's got to, he's got to tell his guys up front, great job. They kept people off of him, allowed him to run free and make the hit on the runner. He filled the gap nicely, kept him to just a one-yard gain. Watch 
play clock winding down. They just do get the playoff as he'll look to throw. And it's a short one here, complete to the tight end. That catch good for five. It's third down. They gave up the completion there, but this is what zone defenses count on. Catching the ball and not much run after the catch. And defensively going with a dime set. Six DBs on third and four. And set up to throw. And he'll be hit as he releases it. And that'll fall incomplete. A lot of teams love to throw screen passes. They want to tire out defenses because they make them run a lot. But there are a lot of moving parts on a play for an offense when they call that one. Because you got the linemen that have to move. you got the wide receivers that have to get out and vacate. you got the running back that's got to make a little fake and then get out into the route. And of course, the quarterback, he's got to hold in there and know he's probably going to take a big hit before he lofts the screen off to the bat. Why didn't he catch it? That's all he needed to do for them to be successful. And no return here. This one's going inside the 15 to the 12-yard line. Now we take a glance at the offense as they work their way back out for their first possession of the second half. They were able to get the stop defensively. Now a chance really to set the tone here in quarter three. They can really take charge, can't they? And this is probably how it was drawn up at the half. I think we can go inside the locker room, all right? And I think we would see up on the grease boards, stop them defensively, get the ball back for the offense, and let's go downfield and score. Seems simple, right? The last part, we have to find out if that's going to happen. But the first part worked to perfection. Did exactly what they wanted, and now their offense has to pay it off. See if they can get the latter 50%. They come up in an offset eye. And they'll go on the ground. And he's going to lose yardage here back to the 12-yard line. He lost two there, and it's third down. This guy carrying the ball, your eyes are going to direct your feet, and you're hoping they carry you to the open spaces. But it's awfully difficult at times because you have so many things you have to look out for. Where's the line blocking? Where's the traffic coming from? Tough to find open spots. He'll look to throw. Quick throw that's complete on the inside slam. Give him nine on the play, and that's going to make it fourth down. One hallmark of good defenses is understanding the game, understanding positioning, and tackling immediately in the secondary after catches. I think we just saw that on display right there. Got to him before he ever had a chance to think about turning it upfield. So in their own territory, but they only need a few inches, so they're going to have to go for this thing. We'll see. Maybe a surprise pass or run. What will they do? We're about to find out. Fourth down. And he gets the first down here as he's taken down at the 24. Wow. That one took some guts. If this doesn't work, you're handing them incredible field position, but this head coach is undaunted, and he makes the call to go for it, and I'll be darned if they don't get the first down. So they pick up the first down after the run, and now they approach for the fresh set. They go play action here on first down. And he can't get away from the pressure the Giants get there. It'll be a loss of 10. And it'll bring up second. Well, they were coming out of the 4-3 defensively. Pressure coming off that right side from the DN. And that's the blind side of most quarterbacks. If you're right-handed, that's the side you don't see quite as well. And that's why you rely on your left tackle, maybe your highest paid right, offensive lineman, Three, to take care of you. In this situation, Three, that didn't Three. happen. the shotgun he'll look to throw and quick throw here that's complete they get 14 back but it leads now to a third down they get the completed pass but still have more to go here on third down and they're going to speed things up here they'll send Beckham alone to the left side out of the gun now on third down and he can't hang on to it nearly picked he's known for his hands defensively but instead, it just brings up fourth down. This is taken at the 15. A nice job on the return there. 16 yards. And possession will switch. Hands first and 10. And here comes the Giants offense back out onto the field. They're out in front. Last time they had to punt it away. We'll see if they can add to their lead now. 
They don't want to go out and, and punt it away again. This team now wants to get a cushion, put people away. They want to run their offense and have it end up in the end zone. They'll run it now out of the gun. And takes this one across the 35 to the 36, a gain of about four. The tackle was made by Michael Bennett. And that's exactly what you want on a first down run. Pick up five yards, bring up second and five. The defensive line, though, they've got to figure out a way to out leverage the guys up front because the offensive line is winning at the point of attack. Hurry up, here we go. All right, now, lucky 56. Lucky 56. Go on, go on. They go come on. up in an offset right. eye. They're going to look to throw. Blitz coming, and down he goes. The corner blitz gets there as he goes down for a loss of seven. Oh, my goodness. Was that a defensive back that got to him with the pressure? <laughs> oh, look at the former defensive back. You're, you're all smiles up here. I hope everybody can hear my smile on that play. Back now here on EA Sports. It's the Giants with the football and also the lead as we get set to start quarter number four. And defensively, a dime look here. Six DBs on third and 12. No surprise at all. They'll run it now out of the gun. A good pick up there. Seven yards, but it brings up fourth down. So much of the game today, we're looking for hybrid players. Guys who can do a combination of jobs. And anyone who plays a strong safety position now more than ever is a hybrid type player. Half defensive back that covers passes and half linebacker that makes tackles. We just saw the linebacker make that play. He gets this one away and boy, it's another boomer. And that'll hit at the five and go into the end zone for a touchback. And the Falcons now making their way back out onto the field. And last time out, they had to punt the football away. Anything positive possibly to take from that? There always is when, when you're punting the football away. It doesn't sound like it because you're giving it up. But you've avoided a mistake. At least you didn't turn it over. You didn't right turn it up. over, right? You're giving, it, you're giving your defense a chance because you're punting the ball away and they're set to go on the field as opposed to sudden change after a turnover. Wow, now you got to go out there and stop people. So, yeah, there's always something bad to be gained from it. Tough day, tough sledding right there, and it's been that way the entire game. Not a whole lot of room to ramble for him. Yeah, you're right. It's been that way all afternoon. Didn't get a whole lot better there. They'll look to throw here. He's got the hook up to Odell Beckham. And he'll get this up to the 34-yard line. So on that play, defense was in the zone. They ran a crossing route offensively, but the defense there, you got to be good with communication, don't you? You certainly do, and it's not something that is really evident when you watch it on the screen. But everyone's talking, communicating, pointing, and it keeps you from chasing receivers because you have a specific zone you have to cover. When a receiver's in your zone and he crosses to another one, you got to let your guy know. They got a completion there, but I like the discipline they show to stay in their proper areas and then make the tackle. And this defense not giving him anything there. Maybe a yard up to the 36. Well, so many times we look at a short run and we praise the offense for trying to set the tempo and establish things, but the defensive guys, hey, they just won the battle there. It wasn't a big run given up. They don't always have to absorb the body blow. Sometimes they dish them out themselves. They'll look to throw. It's a short one here, complete to his tight end. That catch good for only a yard, and it'll be third down. Got to give credit where it's due. Really nice defense on that play. The pitch and catch was successful, but not any run after it. Go, 
And the offense needs seven out of this play on third down. One receiver left, two to the right. On third down, he'll drop to throw. Quick hitter here, it's complete. And he's got the first down yardage as he brings this up to the 47. We'll give him 10 yards on that one, and that'll earn him a fresh set of downs. Through a full-scale, loose, flexible, finding a way to catch the ball in some traffic for a key first down. Yeah, really a nice job of adjusting to the ball in the air. Not the most accurate of throws, but able to adjust and make the grab. They'll look to throw here on first down. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. Well, the beauty of screen passes is they take a little time to develop and they can often hit big, but sometimes they take too long to develop and sometimes you get sacked. Yeah, what's perfectly called for a defense to attack a screen? Typically a blitz. And even though people think that the screen operates against the blitz, if you have the blitz call and you still cover the screen, now that allows your blitzers to get there. Time for a break. We'll come back, see what transpires after this. Here's the seventh play of this drive. This is third and four. They'll send Beckham alone to the left side. On the handoff, this is pro size. And he's going to have the first down yardage to the 35. Give him 12 yards on that one. It earns him a fresh shot of downs. It's really come into vogue to talk about the different gaps that the defense tries to attack in an offensive line. And most of the time we're talking about blitzes. How many times have you heard double A-gap blitz? Well, where is the A-gap? It's the space between the center and the guards, either side. So when you're having a double A-gap blitz, it's two guys coming through that gap. In this situation, though, that A-gap wasn't open for the defense to exploit. The offensive line took care of it, protected it, and moved the defensive guys out of the way to allow for that nice run. That throw good for four. It's second down. Finds a tight end in the middle of the field. Just a simple stick route. Decent game. Doesn't get you a whole lot, but it's pretty reliable, isn't it? And tough to defend. And this is incomplete. Well, pretty good coverage there in both of these defenses. They've had good coverage throughout this one. No doubt about it. And in today's NFL, where we're used to a bit more scoring, this feels almost like a well-pitched game in baseball on both sides where the tension continues to build. Who's going to make the big play? He'll look to throw. And he dropped it. Now it was tipped. Altered the ball a little bit, but he dropped it. And now fourth down. I think that's a big time play there because the slant route is really hard to cover because the timing is so quick. But able to see it, diagnose it, and get to the football, that's why he was able to bat it away. Try it here. He's back to throw. And this time he's got the hookup. It's complete. Give him eight on the play. And they're able to pick up the conversion here on fourth down. Both sides were holding their breath there on that fourth down play. And the offense can breathe a sigh of relief. And both knew exactly where the first down markers were. You know the defense is trying to guard those sticks and try and keep people in front. But somehow, some way, those guys found a way to pick it up. It's always tough for the guys throwing the football when they think they've got a completion and the ball's almost there, and then someone sneaks a hand or two in and bats it away. Back to throw. And the hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. Timing's crucial in any round thrown, but when you throw an out, so many things are going through the mind of the receiver. Catching the ball, timing it up with the quarterback. Are my feet going to get down inbounds? On that play, all those things going through his head might have caused him to drop it. They'll look to throw. And he dropped it. Now it was tipped. Altered the ball a little bit, but he dropped it. And now fourth down. Get 
to give some credit. They're able to hop up in the air and bat that one away. And that's frustrating for an offensive lineman because the only recourse is when he goes in the air to try and give him some type of pop or a shove, hoping to bring his arms down. Defensively, so maybe you try to run a play. And if you do, you do it as safe as possible. And I think maybe even quarterback sneak. Take care of the football and make sure that clock starts to run before they call the timeout. We'll see what they do. They come out here in the eye. And they'll run it here. And he'll cut it out to the sideline. And they'll get it all the way out near midfield to the 45. 23 yards on the play. That outside handoff to the left, that play has to warm the heart of an offensive line coach because they controlled the left side where they were supposed to. They didn't allow anything to leak from the back side on the right side of the offensive line either. Well played. Yeah, it created a big run. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. Well, Charles, the old saying, the old cliche, if you...